Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Sally. Well, it's Friday and we get to pick what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna choose, okay? You make it sound like we don't get to pick what we do every day. Like we're like this is an assignment, we get graded on it. I know, I know. It's it's what you're in me. Um by the way, I went ahead and posted our video where I talked about my little episode um streaking <laughs> on the live video call. And so I'm looking late last night, and sure enough, I get the first comment. I'm thinking, oh God, you know, it's gonna be somebody saying, Why don't you grow up and act your age? And instead, this nice woman says, wow, you find Carhartt. And it reminded me of something. A million years ago, um, I was really poor and I had a little, little baby. She was like four years old. And we lived in the middle of nowhere in Eastern Oregon. And so they had a cheap movie night. And there was a movie on called Candy. Well, that sounds pretty. Well, Candy was one of the very first porns that, that got in local theaters. I didn't know this. So I take my little four-year-old with me and we sit down and you know it opens up and holy cow right off the bat it's a forest scene and these dudes are going at it in the middle of the forest and I'm I'm thinking of my daughter's getting real excited and she says mom mom look and everybody stares around me like I'm the devil and she says it's a deer and then back of these guys <laughs> went at it is a deer so it made me think about it here I'm so worried about you know me being inappropriate and she says wow you found Carhartt so um, anyway, uh, I started a little experiment a few weeks uh, ago. Uh, yeah. We should say we love your comments. Keep oh, we do. I, you know, and, and I did. I and I. She said, "Why? Why don't we just sell car art?" And I said, "Wouldn't that be nice?" Um, <laughs> so about I and mean, I guess it's about a month ago. I had the great idea. In fact, I even did a video and said, "I think I just made three hundred dollars in ten minutes or something." And I had this plan. We talked about it where I was going to do arbitrage. I got this, this uh, app that told me about early sales. So I put about, I don't know, 150 bucks into buying crap. I bought some video games and I, I went down to Walmart. Son of a gun, they've got these toys on. And I started a new store. Well, I didn't sell one thing, <laughs> nothing. I was priced at or below market. I know how to do pictures. My descriptions were good, but my regular store, I've been with eBay for 22 years. The new store, yeah, who's, who's that? I actually put it under poor Bill's name. And um, so I found out that I think arbitrage only works if you have enough money to buy in bulk and you don't necessarily buy kids toys unless you know what you're looking for. So it was a game, it's like a high stakes poker game. I'm not good enough to play at it, but I, about 25 years ago, um, I had the opportunity to have a young man come live with me. <laughs> that sounds a little ominous. Um, I'm gonna say, this is <laughs> just, just like it started off, Sally. All right, I know, cool. well, in fact, I'll tell you a funny thing. I, he, he's now 40 years old. And uh, got me into eBay, actually. So when I mentioned to him, I said, oh, God, uh, Eric, this is what happened. And he said, God, I'd give a million bucks to have that. And I said, I worry about you. I'm kind of your mother. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, I'd have to hire some pervert to authenticate that it was you while I looked away. <laughs> so anyway, Eric um, actually uh, has, has done arbitrage very successfully. And I'm going to add him on um do you do you need to text him or how are we going to get him to add on how will he know to add on he i he said he's in the room oh there he's, there. he's there okay so i I'm know i told eric you. on with us admit and this is the first time i've ever i've ever seen this guy i'm expecting face tats whole shebang <laughs> why face tats you think i have that kind of associates yes <laughs> <laughs> eric i want to see your sweet face Eric is now connecting to the audio. Anyway, um, Eric, uh, we've kept in contact all these years and he kept doing this eBay thing. And I'm kind of an organization person, you know, I love processes. So I was kind of doing that with him. He said, Sally, you ought to, you ought to do this. And I said, yeah, I don't know, Eric. So I had a piece of crap craft thing that I had around the house forever. 
So I listed it, it sold overnight and I was absolutely hooked. You mean it's like a cash machine. You don't have to do anything and you get money back. Well, that isn't exactly it, but it was enough to, to get me going. Come on, Eric, he's connecting to the audio now. Well, you hey, couldn't Eric. do that earlier. Took took you 20 minutes to figure out how to connect to oh, the audio. Oh, there he is. Hey, Eric. <laughs> Are you there? Can you hear me, sweets? Eric. Okay. Yeah, all right, there you are. All right, uh, the here. light is really bad. You kind of look like somebody I wouldn't want to run into in an alley. Oh, goodness. All right, let me go upstairs. Yeah, this is the mother in me talking. And, and by the way, you know. Oh, shoot, um, this is flipping Eric. This guy comments on our videos. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, I, my God, nice. he's famous. I'm the yeah, best commenter famous. you would ever meet. Come on. Absolutely. What is it? I don't know what your shirt says. Stacking what? Stacking chicks. Ooh. You know I don't even that? know what that means. Do you, no. Are you serious? Well, it's it's a it's a thing with Nike. They got all the checks, so I've got all the shoes, but I'm also like collecting money from them. So it's you know stacking checks. Wait a minute. Come on, Sally. Come on. I don't know how that works. <laughs> there are check. There's there's the freaking Nike symbol on the shirt <laughs> twenty times. Is that a check? Oh check, God. check, it's check. It's a check mark. I always thought it was a swoosh. Yeah, they call it the swoosh so that they could brand it as a separate thing so that no one else could have the same logo. But it's a check mark? Well, how boring is that? Oh my God. My, my brother-in-law tattooed it on his ankle. That's how cool this thing is. Oh, wow. <laughs> hmm. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tattoo. Um, Eric, I, I, you missed the part where I kind of talked that you, you, know, you lived with me about 25 years ago and we've kept in contact and how you kind of got me sucked into doing the eBay thing. And I did, I got you hooked on it. <laughs> you did. Um, and I, I, about six weeks ago, you know that I said, God, I think I've got this million dollar idea. And I went out and bought a bunch of shit from Walmart. And, and I said, here we go. And we Keep had a store. Keep it clean, Sally. Okay, crap. And we had a store. And so I said, okay, sales start rolling in. Well, it was a brand new store. I didn't have any history with it. I priced at or below market. Initially, I didn't even do returns, but I thought, okay, maybe that's it. I never sold a thing. So I said, well, Eric, help me out. Eric used to have an eBay store and he had some family issues that came up and dropped the ball, Eric. And so he kind of lost his store because he didn't follow up on, on orders and stuff, but he was taking care of business. So uh, I said, Eric, you know, if you've got some stuff, I know you go ahead. You can, you can, you can quote work for me and list in my store. Well, his stuff was selling. So Eric, tell me about, you know, when I first talked to you, I remember bits of stuff. You were talking about arbitrage that worked in terms of buying products. Like for example, in Astoria, we don't have bed bugs. I don't think. And so my Home Depot will have an overload of that. And you were talking about buying things that aren't popular in your area and selling. Is that how you kind of started arbitraging? Yeah, uh, honestly. Um, well, so I, I, I watched a video one day of, of a guy that um, automatically was making six figures on Amazon, just scanning <clears throat> clearance racks. Um, and this, I happened to be fired from my job the first time I've ever been fired in my life. Um, and so I saw that video and I'm like, holy, you know, this guy's making six figures off of clearance racks. So anyway, um, I came to realize that my local Home Depot is just like inundated with bed bug killer and slug killer. And, um, and he's I in mean, Utah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Utah is, we, we don't have like bug issues here like that. I mean, we have other bug issues, but not those ones. And so I'm sitting here thinking, well, somebody else in this world needs this, this product for a good price, you know? And literally I was finding them for 10 cents a piece for boxes of, uh, you know, bed bug killer. So I just couldn't refuse. So I started buying. <laughs> hey, Eric, did the people in the store look at you funny when you kept buying all this bed bugs? Did they not want to kind of check you out or get close to you? <laughs> there, there was like, there was a couple of times where I honestly was embarrassed at how much bed bug killer I had in my cart. <laughs> and all I could say was, I'm a contractor 
I've got a lot of customers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, so, so you know, it's so uh, bad bug killer, and that were it seems like that would be easy to ship. And then I remember you getting, uh, you'd say, God, Sal, go down to Home Depot. They've got all of their uh, summer stuff on sale, all of their yard stuff. Because, you know, in Utah, you don't do yards in the winter. You have snow blowers in the winter. So yeah. you would pick up a whole bunch of yard chemicals and stuff and sell them to those areas. And, well, and is that a replenishable? Is that what you would call a replenishable? Definitely, definitely. And that's 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 why I keep going back to it because it, it is so replenishable because um, people in Arizona are still mowing their lawns right now. They're, they're, they're still um, taking care of their, their pool. Um, you know, everything Barbecue. that we're not doing right now. And so, I mean, I just... I just bought, I'm about to go buy a pallet of uh, chlorine from Lowe's right now. Um, $18 a bucket. The cheapest I can find online is 105 and I'm selling them for 95 Jeez. Um, nobody here needs chlorine right now. Well, Eric, do you know that during, uh, there was a chlorine shortage during um, COVID and nobody could, with their pool. So nobody has a back supply of it right now where they need it. So, but yep. when I think about a bucket of chlorine, how much does that weigh, and how the heck do you send it? I'm buying the 18 pound. Uh, um, yeah, I think they're 18 pounds. So the only one I've sold so far was two buckets. <clears throat> I just pack it up. I mean, the thing is, like, chlorine can show up damaged. If, you know, you don't have to overly pack it. You know what I mean? It's it's fine. Like if they're just throwing it in their pool. So I throw in a box, I throw some, some padding around the side and, you know. How much did it cost to ship? 40 pounds. Um, I think it cost me 25 something with the discount through uh, UPS. Okay, um, so wait a minute. How much did you pay to buy a bucket? $18 a bucket. And then you have another 20 on shipping? Yes, 25 for, the, for two buckets. So I'm at 36 oh. plus the 25 and he paid me 170. And are you selling this on Amazon? eBay. Only oh, eBay. okay. So you have an eBay store now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> not my own. I'm just working with Sally right now. Um, oh, you're doing this on Sally's store. <laughs> well, it's, uh, Good. it's complicated, but I'm selling for her. I'm working for her, basically. Okay, gotcha. But, yeah. Very I'm taking cool. advantage of, of, you know, family <clears throat> say, and Sally's friends are meant to be. The money's going into Sally's pocket. I like this. <clears throat> yeah, I can. Um, yeah, we'll settle later. She's, uh, yeah, she, she's taking it off the top. Believe me. Good. So <laughs> I, out, of, out of curiosity, what drew you to Home Depot and Lowe's? Because I have so many people are like, oh, I'm going straight to Walmart. Walmart's the one that I hear about. Um, <clears throat> you know, there was a day. So I was working at the hospital during the COVID pandemic. It, it, was, it was like full bore. Um, like working in healthcare sucked at that time. So anytime I could take a break, I would. Like I would leave. And Home Depot just happened to be right next to my hospital that I worked at. And I went in there and I found an, a whole entire display of slug killer that had a price of, um, I want to say like 10 or 15 bucks a bag or something on the sign. And I scanned it with my Home Depot app and it said six cents. And these are like 20 pound bags of slug killer. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I threw them all in the car. I must have bought like 20 or 25 bags, but I didn't buy the whole thing because I wasn't experienced yet. Um, and I took them home and instantly they were selling two, three, four a day. How much and were you selling them for? Um, I think it was like 30 bucks total free shipping. Uh, wow. So I, I think I was making like five, 10 bucks a bag. It's depending on yeah so i sold out of it within like a week or two and so i went back and the, dis the display was still there and i scanned it again and it came as one cent so when it comes up as one cent they're supposed to throw it away and that's when you get the dumpster divers that pick it out of the dumpster and they just had not thrown it away before i happened to get to it and <clears throat> the cashier was shocked when i went through with the rest of this display for like eight cents <clears throat> total. <clears throat> I mean, I couldn't believe it. So, 
So I Eric, you, you lately, um, so, you know, you, so you've been doing that and then you go away from, then you go back, but do you get into buying big equipment uh like for example i don't i'm gonna make this up a lawnmower goes on sale because we're, you're not going to be cutting lawns and d do they do that with big equipment too, or is it mainly should be targeting uh supplies yes so like that's a tricky question um as far as like big equipment i try to keep that um local sales only just because okay. like I shipped a washing machine, for example, that broke when I got to Memphis and Ugh. what a pain in the neck. Just just nasty. Um, but so at the same time, I'm talking about the slug killer. The next week I went in there and they had an entire pallet of backpack um, blowers, uh, leaf blowers, battery powered leaf blowers. So there must have been, you know, 30 on this pallet. And like I said, at the time I was inexperienced, so I didn't buy them all. I just bought like five or 10 um, for 150 bucks a piece. I opened the package. I sold the battery for 150 and then I had the blowers for sale for a hundred. And that's how I got into, into uh, bigger items. Um, and I, you know, going back, I should have bought the entire pallet. Didn't, but um, if I was just starting out, I wouldn't do that. I would just stay with the small stuff and know that you have the best price on the internet. I mean, if you're finding slug killer for a, a penny, then do that. Buy it. But, um, well, the latest the big... thing that, the latest thing you've talked about, you, two things have interested me lately. You, which was surprising, you said, hey, Sal, I, I think I'm gonna pick up some stuff in a pawn shop. And I said, oh, Eric, don't go to a pawn shop. You're never gonna find deals there. But what did you find? Well, <clears throat> that, it's so funny because, so there's two pawn shops I could go to. And the one, um, they just sell things that people have slang to them. Um, the other one, oh, am I still there? Uh, the other one, barely. It, they own all of the uh, storage, storage sheds. It, it, so what they do is they sell the storage shed stuff and then inside the building. Through their pawn shop. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's really complicated because when you buy things there, you have to go through the dad, the son, the brother, the cousin, and make a deal. Um, but what I've found there is PlayStations. Uh, PlayStations, golf equipment, uh, stay away from uh, tools and batteries and things like that. Don't, don't buy that stuff. You'll never get a deal on that. But what you will get is a deal on um, gaming equipment. Um, and this is You'll gaming get, equipment that's come out of uh, storage sheds, you think? So no, okay, it's so. people. It's it's kids that go in there and they want a PS5, so they're showing them a PS4 for pennies, just enough mm -hmm. to to make oh, you know buy. Okay. So, and then the kid doesn't make good on his on his payment to get it back out, and they say get rid of it, and they don't exactly. have a lot into it. Okay. Yeah, and I actually made really good friends with the with the I guess it's the granddaughter that's running it now. The, um, the grandpa's, you know, old enough to retire. And so the granddaughter's running it and she tests every piece of equipment for me. Um, I don't even buy any cords or controllers with it at all. She tests it for me and promises that I can bring it back at any time if it doesn't work. And so instantly, like I priced it too low, but I made, I made like 80 bucks on the first unit I bought. I mean, it was a no brainer. I couldn't believe it. So Eric, is it just it would be worth somebody's time to kind of go to pawn shops and maybe out of five, you're going to find one that might, uh, might be interested in, in dealing with you. Yeah, but it's got to be the right pawn shop. I've been in pawn shops where all they are is a crack house. You know, they're, they're just yep. trying to get a buck, you know? All right. Um, well, let's move away from pawn shops. You brought up something you sent me. Uh, moving away from pawn shops, <laughs> I know you. I know I can't have you very long this morning. I know you've got an appointment. Um, oh, you did, <clears throat> Eric. You said, okay. First of all, Eric has a contractor's license, so he has some knowledge about the issues that people run in. You've also done HVAC, didn't you? Heating, that uh, mm -hmm. air conditioning, that stuff. So what? What he, what he tells me is, Sal. He said, I think you ought to do this, and I said, why? And it is going to chain contractor supply stores. Explain it, Eric. 
speak up there. Too. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm a licensed contractor and I have a specialty in drywall, HVAC, and uh, um, uh, what is it, handyman. So there's like three different licenses. So I, I can't do plumbing, you know, for my insurance reasons. But so anyway, so I, I went to the supply house yesterday to get things for the job I'm doing. And uh, every quarter, this specific store, Ferguson, is required every three months to, is it liquidate or just get rid of this stuff? Um, if, if it's special orders or just things that don't sell, they require it not to be on their shelf. Or they discontinued just, items, maybe. Exactly. Um, or items that sell in Phoenix that don't sell in Utah. That, you know, gotcha. And, and they, they won't take the time to ship it to Phoenix. All they want is to get rid of it. It'll either go in the dumpster or they'll sell it for 25 cents. And so yesterday I was in there um, getting a part for my job and um, I, I, I found a pack of Sawzall blades on, on the discount table. I bought it for 10 bucks. It was worth 50. And then I said, what do you want for the rest of this? Like I'll buy the entire table. And he said, a hundred bucks. I scanned the first item and it's going for 110. And that was just <laughs> the one first item. And I don't even know what it was, to be honest. It, it was uh, some kind of control for a, for a uh, AC. And so people don't realize they can go to supply houses as an actual citizen. Like you don't have to be- Consumer. You don't have to be a licensed anything. Um, you can go there and uh, do your thing. You know what I mean? So, so you know, if it quarters, isn't it? We just finished a quarter, August. So that would make sense. So I should begin looking again, September at the end of the year, huh? Well, and that's where, that's where the buddy system comes in. So the guy that was in charge of this table, um, he said next week, I'm going to load this table up again. And I said, well, I'll be around. Here's my number. I'll just buy it all off of you. Like, you don't have to sit here and sling it all day long. Just give me a price and I'll take it. Um, the last time I did this, it was, it was basically a pallet of, of uh, compressors and, and um, uh, anyway, certain parts for, for air conditioners. But I sold one pump within a day to somebody in, in like South Carolina. It paid for the entire pallet. And so don't hesitate to go into your local plumbing store or your local specialty store, like thinking that you have to be a contractor to shop there because you don't. I once had, back when I did garage sales and they had the yard sale treasure map, I remember I was looking at it and one of these like, uh, what do you call it? Kind of like kitchen, kitchen supply stores that had sinks and countertops and all that stuff. They they had their thing up on the garage sale app, and I went there, and it was kind of like by appointment only. But I was like, screw it, why not go check it out? So then I just did exactly what you did. I just started typing in UPCs and scanning stuff, and it was it was pretty hilarious. Like this, there were all these sinks and stuff that were just brand new in box. They were going for three fifty, four hundred bucks, and they were like, yeah, like twenty bucks for them. And these people were just giving it away. And I didn't need any special license. And I was just amazed that this kind of stuff was selling on eBay. Cause I wasn't, you know, I'm under the impression eBay is for cards and clothes and stuff. So you can sell, it wasn't bad. It was, it was a, it was a pretty good ROI for exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, well, Eric, and, go ahead. Well, and these days there's like in my town, for example, the, the construction is so out of control um it, it it literally is like i am expecting in the next six months to have so many returned or unpurchased items from specialty contractors that never purchase them um i'm i'm expecting to need a storage shed for as much things are that are going to come through are you selling like the big stuff you're still selling it locally what, on like on facebook marketplace or do you just put uh, local pickup only in ebay um i've kind of got away from Facebook marketplace because um, I always feel like everybody knows what I'm doing around here, like my friends and stuff. And, and, and I'm kind of private and I'm sitting here talking on YouTube, like I'm private, but um, 
<laughs> nobody here's the good news we're not very popular not very many no, nobody watch nobody watches only you you hey, wait a minute can we plug his channel eric, eric actually has a youtube channel called flip and eric yeah. flip and eric flip and eric Thanks. you might learn something and from me <laughs> you know in i have in the last 25 years eric the things i've picked up from you like lyrics to rap music and stuff like that that i never exactly. got Sally, Sal, yeah. Sal, like that's your name. Well, so what's your plan, <clears throat> Eric? Are you going to, I mean, you have, I know you, you have a death pile that puts mine to shame and it's clothes and video games. And what do you like to sell? And uh, are you going to direct your, uh, my store more toward uh, arbitrage of commercial equipment or what's your plan? What kind of a mix out of a hundred, what percentage? That's a hell of a question. That I'm is a hell of a question. I'm full of them. I wish I had 10 different stores. You know what I mean? I mean, it started out with shoes. So just so everybody knows, back in the day when I got Sally started, what I was having to do was try to score shoes off of uh, the Nike app, the sneakers app for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if she scored them, she would ship them to me and, or sell them, you know, and uh, that's kind of how we got started. And that was my passion with shoes. Um, and until recently, I never sold a used shoe in my life. It's, I think it was about a month or two ago that I sold a used shoe, even though I have probably 50 pair. Um, I was always about selling the brand new, the best Nike, but I realized that my $200 investment isn't worth the 20 to $40 return that I'm getting. Um, although you can return to Nike at any time, but, um, no, I don't know. So your question about niching down, I don't know. I think that I need a specialty store in Bug Killer and then a specialty store in shoes, games, and um, collectibles. Uh, Thomas, you know, why would you need a specialty store? Why couldn't you just have a section of your regular store? I mean, I was looking at two stores and I had a dozen things listed on the little one. It was a pain in the butt having to check I mean two stores. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, my, my pushback is you don't need two stores. Just manage them separately As, within the same store. Because I'm guessing you're not going to store your video games with your uh, with your weed with your uh, bug killer. But I mean, maybe I, everything I I've ever been told, weed, but but not the weed killer. <laughs> exactly. You're in Utah. Um, you don't do that in Utah. I once I once bought this giant lot of clothes that looking back I shouldn't have bought off a guy taught me a lot but regardless um I've never seen this man I've never seen someone smoke so much weed in such a small period of time just these giant blunts and when we completed the sale he's like oh I gotta I gotta go get something he like climbed on top of the boxes because it was just cardboard boxes reached into the bottom of one that you never would have guessed pulled out i don't know the big like a harold and kumar sized bag of weed and i was like all right there you go <laughs> not, i'm that's not funny. getting that with the sale that's funny because that happened to me the other day with my uh, other reseller buddy i went there to grab some things and uh, he climbed on top of his crap in his garage and there he has a big bag of shake that somebody got from a legal dispensary for like 20 bucks this huge bag and it was a funny uh, situation at the time. <laughs> well, enough, enough talk about enough talk about drugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's legal. You know, we've okay. It's legal here. And, it's legal here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric, what, what I'd like to do is um, see if you would come back, maybe you know, every few weeks or so, and kind of update us on this because we, you know, this is a fresh story. You don't have anything in my little store except your stuff right now. And kind of keep track, and and as you find out uh, new things, and you don't mind sharing them, like I said, yeah. nobody watches us, so it's not like you say anything. Well, you give away your know, know, Sally. You know, honestly, like when when I started my my YouTube, um, I like I was all about telling everybody exactly how to to um, tell when the price drop at Home Depot was going to happen, and everything ended in a three that was already seventy five percent off. Um, and if it went lower than that, it was a penny and it goes in the dumpster. Like I was all about teaching everybody everything. And within a year, they changed the system. It's not like that anymore. <laughs> like they'll go down to three cents, um, kind of, but it's not, it's not like it used to be. You, you can't read the date on the, 
um, the tag and say, okay, it's been six months. This item is going to a penny. Like they've, they've totally changed it. And I, and I don't know if it's from videos like mine. I mean, I, I do have like a few thousand hits on some of those videos, but um, things have changed. Like they really have. And even though I'm a small timer, you know, I'm sure Home Depot watches <laughs> videos like mine. Watches you know? a guy who yep. comes in and isn't scratching and still buys a whole bunch of bed bug stuff. Exactly. You know, they know. And um, I, I think I was watching, um, I think it was Daily Refinement or something. He was talking about how he went to Patagonia and he bought more than nine items. Yeah. In the shop. And so I think Home Depot might be kind of onto that where they're like, you know, why are we letting these people make this money when we could? Yeah, you know, I could argue with him, but uh, Eric is in our group also. Uh, he got me into eBay and I got him into the daily refinement. <laughs> daily. In fact, I said, give me your credit card. And he obediently did. And uh, my son says, I have a voice like the voice of the Jedi women who say, give <laughs> me your credit card. And you have no choice. So I signed <laughs> him up. I signed him up for it. Um, well, Eric, thank you very much for joining us. I know you got to run this morning, but um, I don't know if I'm going to go down to our plumbing store or not because I don't even know what I'm looking at. You but, know what? Uh, got enough stuff. Sally, you got tell, enough stuff. Stop tell, it. Listen, go, go look at your toilet and say, I need this piece maybe. And just take a picture of it. And just look like you're, you know what you're doing or something. I don't know. And then ask them, do you have any clearance supplies? Do you have anything you guys are like trying to get rid of? No, that's a good idea. I have a reason to go in. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and sure. Well, that's act, a good idea. Act like you don't even know what the hell is going on, but but you like to uh, you like to search for cheap items. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't really even know how to. Uh, I don't know how to. Do we know how to close his window on this so he can leave and? So you're the host. You could forcibly oh, exit, or we could just ask Eric to leave. Okay. Well, Eric, I go to your meeting, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Flippin' Thanks, Eric. Me, honestly, I, I love watching you guys, um, and. I've enjoyed watching you guys grow. So you're doing it organically. So once you get to that magic thousand subscriber mark, you're gonna be fine. Trust me, you will be golden. Thank you. All right, take there. care. Okay, take later. care guys. Love you. Bye-bye. How many guests wind up saying I love you? I was, I have, I was gonna say, I have, well, I say it every show after the recording stops. <laughs> Yeah. But, but you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's probably reassuring to hear it on the call too. You know, I, he, um, Eric is another story. And sometime if he wishes to talk about it, we will. But um, I, I talk to him almost daily and wow. very seldom do I, does he end a call without, you know, saying, I love you. Cause we go back a long way. Anyway, wasn't that interesting? That's our that cool. from somebody who, I mean, Eric is really sharp. He's crafty like a rat. You know, he, and. <laughs> sure you'd love um, that. Love to hear he's crafty like a rat. Well, he knows, um, he knows that I would say that about him. But, but looking, I love looking at alternative ways of getting, we all want to sell stuff on eBay. So how do you get, there's a million roads. You know, I buy Gap pants and sell them for $12.95, including shipping. You everybody, sell other stuff. The closest thing I, I compare selling this kind of hardware stuff too is selling auto parts on eBay because it's not close, you know, like, you, like to, to sell this kind of stuff. I don't know if you have like the same background, you probably just have some sort of wall and take a picture of a big thing in front of it. And it's, you know, kind of annoying and tedious to like open up a lawnmower, like box, take a picture of the lawnmower, put it back in the box and then sell it. Like all these oh, things are kind of tedious. If it's a new product, can't you just use um, stock photos? There's stock photos of all this stuff. So, so that is a question. Probably I would, but I'd also be slightly timid because I know that at least in the clothing world, some brands come after you if you use them. So I don't know if like Toro I, I would come after you hard, if you used. Because I'm thinking it really would be pretty easy. I don't have to know what this is. I just have to scan the number, get the description, and 
Google it, get a picture of it and put it on. Cause I mean, I, I'm positive you can use stock photos in eBay as long as it's a new item. Uh, the answer to that is no, but I know the answer is no. It's all brand dependent. It brings up the next question of if you're just gonna sell this stuff, why not sell it on Amazon? But you know, I was I was listening to um, I was I think I was watching Reezy. By the way, Reezy, why don't you come? Why don't you come play with us someday on here? We'd love to. We'd love to talk to you. I was watching Reezy, Reezy resells, and uh, he was talking about how to. You know, he's an Amazon seller, and um, it, it sounded like there were a bunch of barriers to kind of jump over. And uh, so I was a ton there. of barriers. Yeah. It's such yeah. a pain in the butt compared to eBay. But if you do it, you can make more money. And that's jump kind of what I understand. You know, our uh, uh, Brad, who was on our show for uh, video games, was no, no, it was Jack, Jack. Jack on the Jack. call. And Jack only sells his video games on Amazon, I think, doesn't he? He's got some graded video games on eBay, but yeah, but the his, used one, his, most of his, his stock, his money oh. comes from Amazon. Well, all righty then. Um, this weekend, I'm researching for the series that we are going to be doing on uh, helping people understand the options and the benefits of uh, of hiring. You know, so if you're inclined to hire, uh, watch for it. It'll probably be a couple, maybe three, on hiring, and then uh, some unique aspects that you might want to want to pursue. We're we're doing some research on this one. We want to make sure that information we put out is legit. But it's going to right. be a good one. Yeah, it is. Uh, Eric, thanks for having me on. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I always feel like I do. No, Eric, we are the, the queen and king of ramblers. So don't worry about that. Um, and then a couple other things we're working on are uh, a we talked about having somebody come in. Maybe Mandy will come help us on promotions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she will. I still haven't asked her, but yeah, she's definitely oh, going to help us. All right, great. And we still need to get, uh, oh, hey, I've got, I've got a follow-up already. Ooh, talk up, buddy. Talk among yourselves. Um, Mandy is, yeah, she's a friend of mine. Um, All right, enough. She's you in don't the group. need to talk anymore. Oh, okay, done. Me. I was going to say, Yesterday, man, that's Yesterday, we looked at this jacket that I picked up in uh, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it's a cool jacket. It has a picture of a Viking on the front of it. And, you know, you can, you couldn't see it real closely. So you see, yeah, those jackets mostly go for around 35 bucks. And I thought, well, God, that's good because I paid $2 for it or something. I went on. One like this, only a small, just went on auction, sold for $150. No way. Yes, evidently. Are you sure it's the same one? It, it's not It's not like it's, a... No, it's, it, this is it. And the things, in fact, mine is actually a better version. It's because wow. it's what the players are given. It has, see the side zip? So when yes. they're by the, when they're on the line, it has a side zip. It's the NFL product and it's a sewn in label, which means um, evidently there are various levels of this stuff. This is the pro level. I'm not convinced of this, but. Why what are you, you convinced of? Because I haven't seen the listing, but the one that he has might be player issued. And that one I'm. It doesn't very, say that. I mean, like, so to be player issued, it would just have a stamp. Or a nope. knit thing that says like the number. I looked at the then... whole description. Nope. And he went okay. on auction. So I'm thinking about auctioning this and there's no more. Oh, I paid, I paid $3 and 50 cents for it. Um, put it up for, put it up for 200 bucks then. Don't auction well, it. Well, so I just, just it auction for... it. Do whatever you want. I wouldn't auction it because. Yeah, I'm afraid of know. auctions. I'm afraid exactly. of auctions. Exactly. I'm, I'm. I'm too afraid of auctions. You know, involved. I'm still sulking over something I put on auction last year and it was a bidding war and a guy won it. And then afterwards he says, hey, that wasn't me. Somebody got a hold of my thing and I never got paid. He said, you know what? I haven't even listed it again. I'm going to sulk for a while. Show them I won't sell it. Um, anyway, so we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And as usual, I'm going to try to fish out a couple. Uh, well, we have a lot of them of uh, things that didn't make it to the recording. Uh, so, 
Anything else you want to add to this uh, conversation today? As always, subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. We don't care. Let us know what you think. If you loved it, let us know. If you hated it, let us know. If you like the name of your dog, let us know the name of your dog. We <laughs> like all of those things. I really do. I read every single comment and either Thomas or I answers every single one or lets you know that, that we are reading it. We're trying to build our, our YouTube channel and, you know, we're about, what if we are about 20% of the way of where we need to be on subscribers? And well, we're 20% about... of the way we need to be on subscribers to get monetized. Yeah. But the goal is 10 million subscribers. So we are point zero, we're 0.02% there. Yeah. And then we need to get 4,000 watch hours. So um, I, well, I, we hope you enjoy it. And, and we think the way to get there is to get your input. Um, you know, how can we be better? What would you like to see? So anyway, that's all I know for here. I'm going to go, hey, it's garage sale. No, you told me I can't do that. No, you should I'm going to. I can't. It's like, you know, it's like having food in the house. Yeah, um, I know. It's an addiction. So you you got to yeah. cut it off. Cut it off. Okay. Well, Monday, I'll see you and uh, have a good weekend. Let's do it. Okay. Talk to you soon, Sally. Bye. That doesn't, what we just did doesn't go on every video. No, that just goes to the quote unquote introduction. Thank God. I got to get this crap figured out. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to do this. God damn. <laughs> la 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 la. Ready. Good morning, morning, Sally. Thomas. No, all right. We got to do, do, do I, I'll say good morning first. Let it cool off. One, two. Good morning, Thomas. <laughs>